Well, still on this same conversation, just so you know, before we introduce our next guest, whom you have already seen, we did reach out to uh, another senator in the National Assembly, a senator as well, who uh, was, is from the APC and also of um, Igbo extraction. That's a Senator Rochas Okorocha. For some reason, he's unable to make it today. Hopefully, he'll be able to make it some other time. But still in that same vein, we have Oji Uchena Oji, who is of the APC and Commissioner of Information in Ebonyi State. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, so, this is how far so far. Uh, there, of course, as needless to say, opinions are divided on the position of your principal. Uh, how are you taking all of that in? Yeah, as a matter of fact, um, uh, people are entitled to their own opinion, uh, their conception. Uh, but uh, the truth of the matter is that the governor of the body said, His Excellency, you know, Chief David Nazimai, moved to ATC on point of principle. And we will recall that uh, he has led um, um, a meeting of um, leaders of uh, Southeast on um, issues uh, uh, concerning the people of uh, Ibo. And um, one of the issues is uh, um, marginalization that uh, Ibo suffered over the years, particularly under GDP. And um, both the youth, the elders, the leaders are saying that uh, it is time for Ndibo to produce the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. It's not actually by fighting or by war, it is by negotiation. Uh, you will recall that uh, um, over 60 years of GDP rule, um, we have no development in the South. People are talking about appointments of uh, uh, ministers in the uh, election, appointments of uh, presidents of the Senate. But that is not the issue. The issue is all about economic development of the South. Under the GDP your opinion, uh, we had uh, uh, Honorable Commissioner, just a okay. moment. If you can hear me, how will an Igbo presidency even make the kind of difference that you are talking about, given that he is not just going to be president of the Southeast, he is going to be president of Nigeria. Take the example of the former president. He was president of Nigeria and not just president of the South-South. We see, we know, we have records. History will always tell us the things that were done or not done for the South-South while he was there. When President Obasanjo was in government, he also did things but for Nigeria, not essentially for the Southwest. So how will the Southeast presidency change anything for the Southeast? As a matter of fact, uh, under the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, what you hold in common is the president. When he goes to north, he goes to south. And when he goes to south, he goes to the, you know, the three uh, geopolitical zones. And this is, you know, a, a way of giving the people a sense of belonging. But what is important is that in any part of the zone that you come, you see people that have the capacity and, of course, the experience to lead. And uh, this will actually make for, you know, collective, uh, you know, interest in the unity uh, of the country. So I think that the um, issue of uh, presidency is, is critical. But again, I must also mention that um, one of the issues that we need to uh, mention is the fact that PCP has, you know, there. And so we need to maintain, we need to really connect to the party at the time. And of course, if you look at the history of the South East, look at the political development in this place, maybe the president's first independence talking about the effect of the second century. You see that the South East had only way to connect uh, to uh, the party at the center. Even the PDP in, 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 in 1999, where it was the South East had to belong to the PDP because it was a party at the center. Now, PDP has gradually lost its PDP has gradually so I speak in our And so it is only wise for us to connect. Of course, you know our governor is an apostle of one number of people who believes in one Nigeria, who believes in the unity of our country. And so it is only wise and it's only, you know, very, very, you know, right and hard 
But we connect to that part as the Pakistan's always been the tradition of the Pakistan. And I do not believe that if we are not pushing, it is not by, you know, going into war. We need to really have, you know, a kind of heart that will make other regions believe that we are going to by speaking out of the peace. Mr. Oji, Mr. Oji, let me just take you up on this briefly. Now, if we go all the way back to, I mean, when Governor Omai uh, has been active in the PDP, we could, I mean, start from 2007, for example, when he was acting chairman, eventually became the chairman of the party in the state, became deputy governor, still in the same party, the PDP, for two terms. Now, he's governor, and, I mean, at this point, he says that the PDP has been unfair, basically saying that the PDP has failed to meet that aspirations of his people in some sense. So usually when, you know, politicians make that statement, you begin to wonder, you, you are a part of that system. In fact, some people will say you can't just change your party in a day because the philosophy has been there for years, decades even. So isn't that also a direct indictment on the governor as well, who has played a major role in the party, if not in the state, in the region? The governor is not talking about his personal interest. Yes, he was a party chairman and I built the biggest party office in the history of Africa. He became a deputy governor and became the first um, uh, deputy governor to become governor when the boss said no. But the issue now is the agitation of the Southeast. And you know he's the governor of uh, uh, the Southeast, uh, I mean the chairman of Southeast Governors Forum. We are talking about being unfair to Southeast, not to the body, said not to the governor as a person. By the way, all about this is the capacity. And uh, the governor was party chairman, was deputy governor, and he's governor now, two-time governor. It's because of the capacity and the love the people have for him. Don't forget the governor, uh, the same governor is APC city. And that was when APC came at the center. And he didn't join APC. When he was recontesting in 2019, he didn't join APC. Now he's going out ordinary, he don't, doesn't have any, any, any stake at all ordinarily. But he feels that as the chairman of the Southeast Governors Forum, he needs to take the bull by the horn. He needs to make a sacrifice to really show what is, you know, the, 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 the agitation of the people of South. Uh, and I think that um, APC, as it were, has actually done something to show that they can do something more for us. When we have some standard national airport, APC came and it's really uh, making it to be better now. When we, we are talking about having a second major bridge, you know, it never happened on that PDP. But some people you know, also say was, that you know, the governor the wouldn't have been governor, I mean, or deputy governor without the PDP, without running on the platform of the PDP. But in terms of the support of the people, because you mentioned the people, and it's important to have the buy-in on the people, just how much support does the governor have across the constituencies? Because so far we see that members of the National Assembly are saying, well, we're not moving with the governor. We're staying put in the PDP. So, to that extent, how much support does he have? He has the total support of the people uh, of everybody. Say, the party local government areas, the council chairman, the stakeholders, they have consulted. Several meetings have been held over all of these things. And the resolution is that they are standing with the governor. The governor's people shall be, his people, uh, shall be their people. Uh, the governor's party shall be their party. And that was what they did demonstrate yesterday uh, when uh, the governor made an official declaration. All the stakeholders joined. Well, the case of the people national are assembly also the people of the members of the National Assembly. So, not having those members of the National Assembly move with him, don't you think that's going to be a major challenge for him? Or is it that he didn't play the game right? They are going to come back, and the people of Ebony will ask them. They are representing constituencies. Our territorial zones. And these zones and constituencies have said that we are declaring to stand with the governor. And they are, they are, they are there in Abuja. They have not come back to know the feelings of our people. And they are making hasty decisions and declarations against the people's you know, declaration, the declaration of the people of their body. So, so I, I wish them good luck. But when they come back, the people will subject them into a lot of questions. And I can tell them that by 2023, uh, they will have to answer because the people have spoken and um, they are on their own. Well, we certainly will listen to the voice of the people and we hope it's loud enough at that time. Oji Uchin, Oji, APC Commissioner of Information in Ebony State, thank you.
so much for your time and your thoughts this morning. Well, I guess uh, that's the much we can take of uh, Sunrise Daily today and this week. Thank you so much for being a part of uh, our day and thank you for allowing us to be a part of your morning all week. Have a wonderful rest of your day and a beautiful weekend. I'm Ayo Makine. And I'm Kairi Fikir. Thank you.